Thank you, President. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for the four experts who've addressed us today, which I found very interesting, and indeed for the content of this booklet, which I suppose they've had some input to. I'm particularly interested in magnetic resonance imaging. And you may recall that uh, this committee was addressed by two experts shortly after the 2004 directive came out. Uh, they were medical experts from hospitals in London, St. Thomas and Barts. And they were able to say that the limits set in that directive were too low and that had they been implemented, magnetic resonance imaging would virtually come to a standstill and that valuable medical facility would be lost. They were also able to say that in all their experience and in all the records at those hospitals and elsewhere, there were no statistics on record showing that medical workers suffered ill effect from working around the magnetic resonance imaging machines. That was the thought in the Commission mind when they set their limits, that medical workers, of course, are far more exposed to this than the patients taking the, the test because they're there all the time. And I do fully understand that if you're walking about in or near a magnetic or electric field, it can set up electric currents in the body, leading to the effects which the last speaker spoke of, and indeed to tissue damage with overheating. But as I say, the limit was set far too low and MRI scanning would have come to a dead stop. What I want to ask, Madam President, please, is I've heard everything that's said this afternoon. I've noticed the non-binding sections of the recommendation. Can I be assured, please, that if those two experts from Barts and St. Thomas were here today, that they would be happy and satisfied that MRI scanning could continue without interruption? Thank you. To answer you, Mr. Clark, the present system, as it stands, those involved using MRIs, are people pleased with the present situation? I can tell you what they are. Yes, certainly. Can I refer you to the website of the Alliance for MRIs and the manufacturers' websites? Because their press releases on both those websites coincide fully with our proposals in the text in Annex 4. Of course, not everybody necessarily agrees about all these things, but what I can tell you is this. There is a real will to come up with a solution which bonds workforce protection with the further development of this technology, which is essential for patients. We think we've really done whatever we possibly could in that particular uh, direction. Thanks very much indeed. Well, Rapporteur, would you like to just sort of conclude this debate now for us? When it comes to health, MRIs are available to all of us. Meanwhile, we may well need them. You never know when. A general view that MRI technology is completely compatible with this new directive, with this new direction we're moving in. I agree. And I, I, I'd like to say to Mr. Clark, if I may now, turning to you, that yesterday... We talked to Carinas <coughs> and Rapporteur, we, we held a hearing, uh, uh, Mr. Clark, we held a hearing uh, with the uh, IRM, uh, MRI Alliance, and based on that, by the way, please correct me, colleagues, uh, various r rapporteurs in this room if I'm wrong, but I th think I'm right in saying that we've just verified what the previous speaker was saying, Mr. Erbion. We've shown that there is compatibility here concordance between your concerns, our concerns, and this issue of uh, potential use. Let me clarify something, if I may. That's as follows. As has already been said, in a directive, machinery equipment changes, is seen as changing all the time, which means we must keep up with technological change. One thing, however, we didn't notice, which we're going to be very careful about, and I know my colleagues are going to agree with me about this, is the environment around the equipment. The machine exists in an environment. The environment, therefore, offers security in relation to um, the equipment. Faraday cages, that type of thing. The worker is not necessarily part of the machine. There is a distance, a physical space, within which the worker operates, and that is within the immediate environment. Please take note of that point. As Mr. Erbion was just saying, this is my second point, there are cases for strengthened measures within which 
setting up practical roles will be important to facilitate the role of business. A number of experts talked about this. They focused on this issue and said that this regulation must be of practical benefit and user-friendly to industry because if the techniques involved are taken over totally and exclusively by manufacturers, that's no good. It must extend right through into the working environment. My final point is this, and it echoes what a previous speaker already said. Many sectors are concerned by this. Certainly both public and private sectors are. So the economic issues here are of great importance to all of us and are crucial to the nature of the decisions that we're taking. That would be true of machinery, that would also apply to the future development of, of new technologies and equipment. And it's got to be related to health costs as part of that overall picture. In my role as rapporteur, I have tried in dealing with this particular subject to draw up some draft amendments, draft proposals to the Commission text, being as effective as I could on the way. Uh, we, of course, work on this on an ongoing basis. And I'd like to add the following point. Uh, Madam Ms Lynn is absent today. But, for her regard, can I say that the basic um, guidelines that she's come up with are very much in line with her own views, with her focus in particular on pregnant women, where they are working in an environment of magnetic uh, waves, magnetic fields, and she said we must concentrate on that issue as well. I agree with that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much indeed. We now come to the end of this particular meeting.